David Brewster here, a new episode of Three for All. This is Three Oddly Freed Licks from 2007, and I've had some requests to feature some of his music. And Oddly Freed's not really a household name, but he should be. He's a great player, you know, blues rock style with these funky and jazzy, you know, elements at play. You know, great guitarist for sure. Great tone and phrasing and feel and bending and vibrato and hybrid picking and all kinds of stuff. So if you're not really hip to Oddly Freed, get ready, because there's some great ideas in this lesson. For those of you out there that are scratching your heads trying to wonder, you know, where you know Oddly Freed's name, if you recognize his name, he definitely hit the scene in the early 90s with the band Cry of Love, and that's when I first noticed, you know, his music. And it blew me away, this kind of funky, Hendrixy, you know, blues rock style. You know, that first album, Brother, is great, and Diamonds and Debris, their second album, is good too. But, you know, Oddly's definitely done a lot of stuff since then. Worked with the Black Crows, and famously worked with Jimmy Page when they did the Live of the Greek album. Uh, Warren Haynes and Government Mule and Peter Frampton and uh, Grace Potter and Cheryl Crow and a whole bunch of people. So here's an image with some of the people that Oddly's worked with either behind the scenes or on stage, you know, touring and whatnot. But very impressive. The licks in this lesson came from a live performance in, I think it was in Nashville, Tennessee, at a Gibson event. And Oddly's literally, you know, talking about his tone, talking about his gear. He's switching back and forth between a Les Paul and an SG. And, you know, it's really interesting. So I don't know if this was like a summer, you know, NAM event or it was just something separate that Gibson did. But there's some great ideas. Some of those jazzy kind of ideas are coming into play here and just a lot of hybrid picking and some really cool stuff. So here we go. The first looks the snappy hybrid picked uh, A minor blues idea and it's really cool. Something like this. <laughs> Tonic with the flat five right there. And he's actually starting on the G string right here and he's snapping with hybrid picking. So that's the first part. So he's kind of doing almost the same thing on the D and the A. kind of coming down a blues so right there and right there when you get to that a that's actually where you hear him actually play a little piece of it's like a5 and then you hear him grab that G and smear it into that a and he's still letting like his thumb grab that low uh, a root note right there playing style. He has this really flowing and um, effortless kind of sound, but then he's hybrid picking and snapping notes and grabbing bends and stuff like that, so it's very exciting to hear him play. Okay, next up we have this jazzy slip and slide lick, and this is over B7, and it's really cool, like this. right there and basically oddly started to explain where this idea came from he borrowed a phrase from bb king and he also borrowed some shifting ideas from larry carlton um, which he pulled from steely dan's kid charlemagne solo and he combined those two ideas together to create this lick and he explains it during this footage you know from the gibson event but right there he's basically starting here and that's the bb king lick right there Uh, targeting uh, E7, kind of, and then you're ending on B7. King lick, you're kind of like suddenly 
settling into uh, B minor pentatonic right there. <laughs> there when you get to the G string you're basically kind of targeting that flat five right there and then you're moving up and that's where that really jazzy flavor comes in slip and slide licks it's blurry and it's jazzy and I love stuff like that the next idea is actually the same lick but when oddly played it again he changed the flow and kind of the function of the phrase and I found that really interesting where it's almost the exact same thing it does end a little bit differently but it's the way he phrased it, you know, because the first time he just crammed all those licks in there. And then the second time he kind of did this. You know, kind of uh, changing the face of that lick, even though it's pretty much the same. But he did start it a little differently. He kind of anticipated that slide. basically hits that A and then ends on that B instead of doing the bend like he did the first time. And this is a great example of taking a lick and then kind of modifying it. Maybe you're not really changing the notes, but you're changing the rhythm and the flow of it. And it really does kind of, you know, change the face of the lick. Instead of just cramming it like we did the first time. Kind of had this like groove to it. And that's something to remember, like when you're learning these licks, either from this channel, you know, on Three for All, or somewhere else out of a magazine or wherever. You know, learn the lick and then play with it, like change the flow or the rhythm or the tempo or the key or whatever, and see what happens when you kind of mix it up a little bit like that. <laughs> Here's a bonus lick, or if you want to consider this lick number three, since licks two and three were basically the same thing, just phrased and arranged a little bit differently, um, that's up to you. You can think of this as lick three or a bonus lick. But here's another kind of slip and slide or Peggio targeted idea, and this is in D7. It's really cool, like this. <laughs> basically starting on D, but he's kind of targeting like this D over F sharp. So he's you know, hammering on that E to F sharp, and then grabbing that A and D. And then right there, he basically slides into this G, so it's all implied. And right there, he's sliding into this uh, implied C major. Right there, really crafty. This is basically D7 implied. Like that. But you're grabbing that F sharp, that A, and the C. Really cool. And when you get to that, and he's definitely hybrid picking his way through it. Because I'm picking the first note with my pick and then plucking the, the D and the G. And then again on that G, you know, triad right there. And on the C. And on the D7 implied. And then he comes down. That almost reminds me of David Gilmore for some reason. hybrid-picked ideas, and it's jazzy, too, which is so cool. And it's tricky, too, because you have to really watch
watch what you're doing. And that combination of picking and hybrid picking is really hard to do until you kind of smooth it out and get used to it. <laughs> Here's a clip of Oddly breaking that last lick down, which might actually help you see a little bit clearer what he was doing, but it's so cool. It's a D chord, right? And that's why that's a G sus. C arpeggio, D7 arpeggio. So when you play that, That's going to wrap this episode of Three for All with three oddly freed licks from 2007. And like I mentioned at the beginning, I mean, he's a dynamite player, you know, full of all these great ideas, hybrid picking and these jazzy kind of slip and slide, swirly, you know, ideas. And then that blues rock energy, you know, this Hendrixy, uh, you know, kind of funky energy when he plays, especially back with uh, Cry of Love. You know, and speaking of Cry of Love, once again, I'm going to follow this episode with a chord play for Cry of Love. So you can really get an eye and an earful of Audley's rhythm style, which he's got some great ideas, you know, whether it's lead and licks or rhythm and fills and stuff, you know, a package player for sure. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to the Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.